Hi folks, HR Funk here, with a quick midweek update to cover a couple of different things. First off, this coming Sunday, which is going to be Sunday, August 1st at 1 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time, I'm going to be appearing with Dan the Wolfman of CatchJitsu.com on his podcast. Now he does a weekly podcast from 1 to about 3 on Sunday afternoons, and he's asked me to come on his podcast as a guest. And if you're not familiar with Dan or Catch Jitsu, Dan does a lot of videos that are martial arts related, and he also does quite a few videos that are firearms related. So if you have time, you can tune in. That should be fun. I'm not sure exactly what all we're going to talk about. We're probably going to cover a lot of ground. So again, that's going to be this coming Sunday, 1 o'clock, Eastern Daylight Time. Hope to see you there. The other thing I want to cover in this midweek update is Smith & Wesson revolvers. Now, as I said, this coming Sunday is August 1st. That means we're coming closer to the end of summer. And as fall gets closer and closer, we're coming around to gun show season. And with gun show season, I thought it might be a good thing to cover the things that I look for in a used Smith & Wesson revolver when I see them at a gun show. Now, some of the things that I'm going to cover, I might not look at every single time at every single revolver that I check out at a gun show. Other times, depending on what I'm looking at, how much it costs, and exactly what type of revolver it is, I might check every one of these and then some more. So... We're going to take a close-up look, and for a model in this particular video, I'm going to be using my Smith & Wesson 44 Magnum mountain gun. Part of the reason is because since it's an end frame, it's big enough that hopefully you'll be able to see a lot of these things a little bit easier than if I was using a smaller revolver. So here we go. Let's take a look at the things that I do when I check out a used Smith & Wesson revolver at a gun show. And here we go. The first thing I do before I ever touch anything that's on a table at a gun show is ask permission from the person behind the table if I can pick that firearm up and take a look at it. Now I know if it's on a table at a gun show it's probably for sale and probably people aren't going to care if someone handles that firearm and checks it out. But there are some, particularly the more valuable and more rare firearms, that the person might not want you handling it, spinning it, doing whatever. So it's always a good idea to ask permission first before you just grab something off someone's table and start doing whatever you want to with it. As long as the person gives me permission at that point, I will pick the firearm up. And in general, before I do anything else, I just want to look at the general condition that that firearm, or in this case, the revolver is in. Do I see any obvious signs of damage or abuse? Are there dings or nicks? Or do I see rust making it look like that particular revolver might have been neglected? And if so, depending on what I see right from the get-go, I might just put that revolver right back down and say thank you very much and be on my way. But if I'm still interested in it after my initial inspection, I will open it up and make sure that it's unloaded. Now, it should have been checked by multiple people before anyone ever comes in. On the day of the show but still with any firearm that you're looking at make absolutely certain that it's unloaded before you do anything else once i've determined that it's safe to handle my used revolver the next thing i like to check is the timing again it's a good idea to ask the person who's behind the table if it's okay if you work the action and if you dry fire the revolver before you start just pulling the trigger and doing whatever you want to with it Again, as long as that's okay, I like to check the double action first. And the main thing I'm looking for with this is to ensure that the cylinder locks before the hammer drops. And at this point, the cylinder is locked. And you have to do that for each of the six chambers. If the hammer falls at any point, before the cylinder is locked, then the revolver has a timing issue. Now, that may or may not dissuade you from purchasing the revolver, but it's something you definitely want to be aware of before you start to plunk down your money and take this particular revolver home with you. Remember, you have to check the double action lockup, or timing rather, and you also have to check the single action, again, ensuring that the cylinder locks before the hammer is fully cocked.
and we can see that the timing on my mountain gun here is virtually perfect. Now a lot of times simultaneously with checking the timing I will also be checking for end shake. I'm just trying to see if there's any discernible movement of the cylinder back and forth and I'll also check for rotational play. Now there does need to be just a bit of rotational movement in order for the revolver to function properly but it should not be excessive and it definitely should not allow the chamber to move out of alignment with the bore. Now as you're checking the timing and the lockup and looking for rotational play and end shake, you'll also be noticing the trigger pull on each and every chamber. If you start to feel the trigger pull get heavier on some chambers and then lighter on other chambers, again that's indicating there's a problem and the problem may well be that the extractor rod is bent. And even if you don't feel that, what I like to do is pull the hammer back slightly. And if you look down here, you will see the cylinder stop. I'll try to get this so you can see it. Actually drop down out of engagement. Now you have to hold the hammer in just the right position and you can then spin the cylinder. And what I'm doing now is trying to see if I feel any difference or any resistance at all on each chamber as I'm turning the cylinder, again, to indicate that either I've got a bent extractor rod or there's some other problem causing the cylinder to bind as it rotates. Next, I'll try just a couple of dry fires. This time, I'm just strictly checking the trigger and hammer function. Be sure again to try both single action and double action and make sure you see here that I'm holding the trigger back after I fired that last shot or after I, I did that last trigger pull and then when I release it make sure the hammer rebounds just like that. That's a safety feature of these revolvers and you want to make sure that you see that movement. Also we want to check with the older revolvers like this one that have the hammer nose and make sure that first off it's there <laughs> It's not excessively loose. It's probably going to be just a little bit loose and it does need to have just a little bit of movement. And I'm going to squeeze this. And if you can see it there, we can see that hammer nose protruding through the bushing right there in the front of the recoil shield. And that would appear to be sufficient protrusion that it would make good contact with the primer on a chambered cartridge. Next, I'm just going to check the cylinder release and make sure that it's both releasing with no problem and also locking back into place. And make sure you rotate this a little bit so there are different chambers on top as you're opening it and closing it. And again, just making sure everything is unlatching with no problem and then also locking back up properly. While you've got the cylinder open, take a look at the forcing cone at the rear of your barrel there. Make sure you don't see any cracks or any obvious damage to that. Also take a look at the top strap. Make sure you don't have any excessive flame cutting or anything else. And Just take a general look inside the cylinder window. Make sure you don't see any other suspicious marks. Make sure your bushing is present. Also while you have it open, go ahead and check your extractor. Make sure that's moving freely and check your extractor rod just to make sure that's tight. And remember, depending upon the age of your revolver, that might be either a right-hand thread or a left-hand thread. Most of the newer ones are left-hand, meaning you turn it to the left or counterclockwise to make sure that it's tight. It's also a good idea to take a look at the screws that are on your revolver. Now, depending on how old the revolver is that you're looking at, it might have three, four, or five screws. This one has three, only two of which are really visible. But take a look at the screw heads. Make sure those things are not all mangled, indicating that somebody has been in there tinkering around and not even using the proper size screwdriver as they were doing that. If you see all kinds of damage to these screw heads, 
there's a good chance that somebody has been doing something inside there. Again, that may or may not indicate that you're going to be getting a problem revolver, but it's just something to be aware of. And if you start to see other problems, that might just be an additional indicator that this is a revolver you should probably pass on. I also want to check the revolver, specifically the hammer, for push off. So I'm going to cock it into single action mode and just push on the hammer and make sure it doesn't fall without the trigger being pulled. Now don't put tons and tons of pressure on this or you can damage the revolver just from checking it. But I'm just going to push that and make sure that that hammer doesn't drop until the trigger is pulled. Now there's another check that you can do to make sure that the internal safety is working properly to prevent the revolver from firing if pressure is not kept on the trigger the whole way through the time the hammer falls. I'm not going to demonstrate that. That's really something probably that if you have that kind of a concern with your revolver, have it looked over by an armorer or a gunsmith. But for those of you that know that test, you know what I'm talking about. And usually it's done with two pencils. Take a look at the revolver's sights. Make sure that they are not bent or otherwise damaged. If you have adjustable sights like this revolver, take a good look at those, especially the older ones. This screw in the front had a tendency to come loose. Now again, that's not a real big problem as long as the screw is still there. It can be tightened back down, but just make sure you don't see any problems there. Make sure there are no dings or nicks or chunks knocked out of the rear sight. I also like to take a look down the bore and just make sure that I don't see any pitting or definitely any rings in the bore. Make sure we don't see heavy leading or anything else that might be a problem. Make sure the rifling is nice and crisp. This is also a good reason to have a small flashlight with you at the gun show. Also take a look at each individual chamber. Make sure you don't see any damage or again, any problems, pitting, rust, or what have you in any of those. Take a look at your extractor. Now this is one of the newer ones that does not have the small pins down here in the face of the cylinder. If it did, you want to make sure those are present. But as I said, this one doesn't have those. Take a look at the front of your cylinder. Again, make sure you don't have any kind of heavy leading or any other problems with that. Also take a look at your crane right here. Again, make sure that's not bent. That's another thing that can cause problems. If you feel resistance when you're closing or opening the cylinder, it could be that this is bent. And especially if you get somebody that wants to do the old TV closing of the revolver where they just snap their wrist and close it shut, that's a good way to bend that. So avoid that practice at all costs. Now all these are just general things that I check for specific revolvers, particularly historic or antique revolvers. There are other things that may come into play. And those are really beyond the scope of the things I'm talking about in this video. I'm looking at more of a shooting grade revolver, but if it is a collector grade, then things like the proper stocks and other things might come into play that really need to have an expert to look at them and make sure that they are all proper for that historical revolver. And that's going to do it for this midweek update. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or comments about this video, as always, make sure you forward those to me. Remember, if you purchase anything from Optics Planet, be sure to use my discount code, which is... And if you use that discount code, it's good for 5% off anything you purchase from Optics Planet. Also remember, WarbirdBunker.com is making t-shirts for the channel. If you go to WarbirdBunker.com, you can find my t-shirt there, as well as all the other ones that Nathan has that are firearms and patriotic related. Also, if you use my discount code on WarbirdBunker.com, which is hrfunk 4 u that's good for 10% off any of your purchases from WarbirdBunker.com. So again, that's it for this week. See you next time, and until then, good shooting. Bye-bye.